Mali pala yung tinuro niya sa akin. Okay? Now, if you sleep this way, it's still okay because by evaporation naman. Okay? The Word of God will enter your head. But if it's this way, it's better because it's also by gravity. No? Or this way, pwede rin. As long as it's on your head. Because, fa- see, the thing is, this does not speak. You can't hear this unless, of course, they whack you on the head. Now, that you will hear, okay? It's going to ring in your ears, kind of thing. But that's not what it means. The Bible says faith comes by hearing the rematos ho Christo, which means the spoken word of Christ. Now, what is the word of Christ? It's the word of grace that is spoken. So let's check and see if that is, in fact, the context of that. Look at this. 1017, let's back up to verse 14. How then shall they, unbelievers, call on Him, Christ, whom they have not believed? So you need to believe first, so you can call on God. And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not, what? Heard. So now we're talking about here. And how shall they hear without what? A preacher. So we're talking about preaching. See? Preaching what? The Word. Now let's move on. Look at this. Verse 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. So if you think your feet look like Luya, preach the gospel and it will be beautiful feet. Diba? I mean, even if your feet are like this, they look like your hands. You know? Like gorilla feet. It's okay. Preach the gospel. Everyone will say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach glad tidings. They will be glad you came. Amen? Now look at this. Who preach the gospel of peace. What? Peace with God and the peace of God. Not the gospel that keeps you away from God, but brings. that's why it's glad tidings. That's why it's called good news. See, it's good news. Now look at, let's move on. But they, shall not, uh, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then, now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the spoken word of Christ. So it is when you hear the preaching of the word that your faith comes. See? That's what it means. But it's the preaching of grace. Good news. Peace, the glad tidings of peace with God. That's what God anoints. That's the message that God, that that, that liberates men from fear and therefore now they are able to walk in faith. Colossians 2.13 and 15. Look at this. And you being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made alive together with Him, having forgiven you, how much? All trespasses. That means there is no sin left in your life. I remember I was listening to this one um, teacher that came to the Philippines many, 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 many years ago. Uh, back in the early 90s he came. Uh, or even late 80s, no, early 90s. And he brought a lot of confusion to the church. Not just our fellowship before, Lord of Glory, but the church, the body of Christ here in the Philippines, by his doctrines. But see, it made sense. His, his, uh, his gospel made sense. It was reasonable. It was logical. Sounds like the devil. The devil is always reasonable. He's always logical. God is usually counterintuitive. But what he said was this, you know, when you sinned, you didn't commit all your sins at one time. You sinned one at a time. Therefore, when you repent and come to Christ, you better repent and, for, and ask forgiveness for all your sins one at a time. Otherwise, if you leave any sin still inside you, it will be like cancer that will eat you up from the inside and before you know it, you're dead. See, it made sense. But it's not the truth. It's not the truth because grace says, I will remember your sins no more. All you got to do is to come to Christ. That's it. 
It's not even making a list of all your sins. All of us, you know what we did? All of us, we were given paper and pen so we can write down all our sins. What happens if in your own desire and earnestness, you forgot a sin? You know, so now you go back, go back, go back. I'm still not being blessed. So you go back, go back, go back. Then you realize you have this very deep resentment for this doctor. You know why? When you came out of your mama, he smacked you. And you never forgave him for that. But because you were a child, it's not in your memory. Here you are minding your own business, holds you upside down, and boom, slaps you on the backside. You didn't even sin yet. See that? And then you develop that. So now you have to go all the way back there. What if, let's say, while you were still in your mother's womb, your mama said, Ewan kung ba, kung bakit nabuntis pa ako ngayon? So now you're resenting your mom. See? I mean, it becomes nonsense at some point. That's why Jesus made it easy. Just come to me. All your sins are forgiven. You don't even have to think about it. In fact, I want you to forget it. Just forget it. See, having forgiven. In English, if I'm not mistaken, that is the past perfect tense. Is that correct? Past perfect. Having forgiven. Is it correct? Past perfect. Okay. Never mind, it's good news anyway. It's good, whatever it is. Past perfect, you know, past participle, who cares? The thing is, having forgiven all trespasses. Having wiped out, I like that word, wiped out. In Tagalog, same plan. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements. What is the handwriting of requirements? The law, exactly, the law. That was against us, which was contrary to us. Look at it. The law is against you. It's contrary to us. The law is not your friend. It was given by God. The law is holy, but it's not your friend. The purpose of the law is to make sin exceedingly sinful. Romans chapter 6, I believe. So the law is not your friend. It's not. And he has taken it out of the way. I mean, you can't get clearer than that. God himself, he took it out of your way. In other words, the law is your hindrance. The law is your roadblock. You cannot move forward as long as you are submitting yourself to the law. It is contrary to you. In other words, you're trying to move forward and it's there trying to stop you. It is providing resistance to your upward movement in Christ. Now, look at this. I love this. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Now, this verse we are familiar with. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Now, we know that this is the cross. But how did, the, did Christ make a public spectacle of the enemy and triumph over them? Two ways. Number one, he forgave you of all your sins. Not because you did anything worthy of forgiveness, but he decided, you know what? I'm just going to forgive you. How? I'm going to take the law out. I'm going to take the law out of the way. So he nailed it to the cross. And in doing so, it became a public spectacle against the enemy of your soul, the devil. See, that's how he disarmed these powers. In other words, every time you come back under the law, you are rearming the enemy against you. Because he will use the law against you. So what God did was he took the law out of the enemy's hands. He disarmed them. Now they have no weapon formed against you that can prosper. See? So don't go back under the law. Otherwise you arm them. It's like what the military does with the Abu Sayyaf. They go there, kill a few people, take all of their weapons, and then behind their back, sell it back to them so they make some money, and then they fight again. You know, that's why they don't want all-out war. See? Because it's a business. If you don't know that, wake up and smell the coffee. We have this VFA that's willing to help us crush the enemy 
and what? Oh, by the way, it's not 